no signs high. Let the people on the street know why we're here. Now, without any further ado, please help me welcome Dr. Sunil Agarwal, everybody. What's up, New York? How you guys doing? <laughs> okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop some knowledge bombs on y'all just because, you know, if we're going to go out there and talk about the benefits of cannabis sativa, we got to know our stuff. we got to say, like, yeah, man, yeah, man. Let me tell you something. Cannabis emerged on Earth 36 million years ago. 36 million years ago. Evolved on planet Earth somewhere in India, somewhere in China, Central Asia, somewhere over there. Since that time, we, that is us homo sapiens, have spread it across the planet Earth. Every, it is probably the most widely domesticated plant on the planet. It is everywhere because somehow we like it. Why do we like it so much? Why do we like it? Because somehow we have figured out all these wonderful uses for it. It just somehow binds to the, 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 the molecules in our brain, in our immune systems, just like a lock fits a key. I'm not saying that that's the only thing it does, but it's an amazing gift of cannabis. Now let me tell you something else. Cannabis and hemp and marijuana, they are all the same plant. They are all the same plant. They've recently done genome mapping studies. The entire genome of cannabis has been sequenced in Toronto. And it turns out that like, uh, they, they looked at Granddaddy Purple, and they looked at a standard hemp strain, and it turns out genetically they are, very, they are almost identical. It's just different genes get turned on and turned off differently depending on the strain, depending on the type of cannabis. And so what that tells us is that cannabis, even though we grew it for hemp, Hempstead, New York, uh, hemp, you know, um, uh, down, down in uh, the Mexico, which used to be called New Spain, the Spaniards brought cannabis to, to, uh, to grow for their sales. All of that hemp eventually at some point probably turned into drug cannabis just on its own. So when people tell you, oh, you know, cannabis and hemp or marijuana hemp are so different, it's not true. They actually are very similar to each other, and we, they, they are kind of two pieces of the same coin. So where does all this, uh, you know, prohibition come from? It comes from religious zealots. Way back in the 1500s, Catholic Inquisition conquistadors, who were looking at what all these indigenous people were doing. And they said, what, you can't eat that and think that you're having communion with some higher power? That's not what, what our book says. You have to, to drink this and eat this and not, not drink that and eat that. And they took those people and they hung them upside down in the public square and they issued edicts of prohibition. And it's, there's recent research by a, a Mexican historian named Campos who's tracing cannabis back into that history. So it's possible that it was in Mexico originally that cannabis was first prohibited. It's not in the U.S. first. So that's pretty amazing. When we talk about the war, America bringing the war on drugs into Mexico, it turns out that some of those same attitudes against marijuana started in Mexico before they were even here. Why am I telling you all this? Because we have to understand that this is a global culture. This is a global phenomenon. It is both the use of cannabis as a, as a recreational, medicinal, industrial um, product has showed up all over the world. It's not just here or there or this culture or that culture. Where, where my parents come from, where my heritage is, is India. In India, in the South Asian continent for millennia, they've been using cannabis for various purposes. It turns out when they came to the U.S., they, they, they took me to the place in this country that is the most anti-cannabis on the, on, in the whole country. And they even had a song about it. If you guys ever heard that song, Oki from Muskogee? It goes like this. We don't smoke marijuana in Muskogee. We don't take our trips on LSD. We don't burn our draft cards down on Main Street. 
Because we like living right and being free by locking people up. So, uh, anyway, let me just tell you that uh, I'm an Okie from Muskogee. And, and it's not all true that way, but I'm just showing you how two different cultures are existing in the same human being in front of you here. One culture which celebrated cannabis as a powerful substance that could help us bring us closer to our spiritual roots. Cannabis is written into the Vedas, the holy books of India to a place in the buckle of the Bible Belt where cannabis was seen as the symbol of a counterculture and the symbol of that which was wrong. Unfortunately, the Okies got it wrong. Unfortunately, it turns out that cannabis is actually something that we need to embrace. And the way we, do, the way we embrace it, the way we do this, is not to obsess about cannabis. It is to create the contexts that are going to allow more and more people to access cannabis. Look, our, our population is aging. Every, more and more people are living beyond the age of 75. It, it, more and more people are, are going to be needing this cannabis medicine to help them ease into the elder parts of their life. And we have to create the situation where people feel comfortable using cannabis to help them with their pains, their sufferings at the end of life. That's one phenomenon. Secondly, religion, spirituality, recreation, Look, cannabis is not recreational in and of itself. It just creates a situation that makes it easier to recreate, to get into a mindset where, yes, I can relax. And it turns out that the entire stress axis in your body, from your brain to your adrenal glands, they're full of cannabinoid receptors. That's why this is working this way. And so when you go in with the intention, I'm going to use this to relax, it just so happens that drug is right there for you. If you're going to go in there with the intention that I'm going to, you know, have a, a great party, it's going to be right there. If you're going to go in with the intention, my pain in my leg is so unbearable because the nerve is, dam nerve is damaged from diabetes or, or what, whatever injuries, cannabis will, can relieve that pain. That's how drugs work. It is all about how we use them. Thank you. Uh, so let me tell you, 40 years ago, down on First Avenue, the UN had their meeting where they decided that cannabis would be globally monopolized. That was 40 years ago in our city. Do we still believe that? Do we still think that a bunch of world governments are going to own this plant? No, no. <laughs> So, what we have to do is educate ourselves that cannabis is not something for them to own, it's for everybody uh, to, to take part of. Because the Occupy message is all about privilege, I want to leave you with one idea. There are pharmaceutical companies now that are producing cannabis in massive greenhouses, extracting it, and they are giving it to patients in New York City in clinical trials and in other places in the world. It, Turns out, in order to get cannabis into this country, you grow it in England, you extract it in a liquid carbon dioxide, and you bring, can bring it to people here. Those people aren't rounded up and taken to jail. They're given, they're given large venture capital funds, they're given jobs, and they're given uh, access to highly uh, reputable publishing uh, centers. That's, what, that's the privilege game that's being played, okay? So we have to, as a people, say that this is a medicine movement that's coming from the bottom up. The top down should not bring this to us, and that's what's happening right now in New York City. So, anyway, my last, uh, that was my last thought to you. Have a great Cinco de Mayo, and uh, remember, cannabis is for all of us. Thank you very much. Give this man some love. The doctors are on our side. The honest police are on our side. The facts are on our side. And I must ask, is the heart on our side? Sure is. Well, now, I am bringing up one of the moms.